Hey everybody, I have here on me the Umi Digi F1 Play. So this phone sells for 200 bucks and it has some impressive specs. I mean, other than the chipset. So let's look at the website really quick. So Umi Digi F1 Play. So you see that it's head, uh, it has a dual camera system with a 48 megapixel main lens and an eight megapixel secondary camera. I don't know what that is yet, the secondary camera. I'm gonna test it out. Runs on Helio P60. And it has a 5,150 milliamp hour battery. So that's a big selling point, 5150 milliamp hour. Umi Digi phones, they've been pretty good in the past about cramming a pretty large battery into a phone that's not that thick. So you have a 6.3 inch 1080p display. Uh, everything else seems about pretty standard. So I'm most interested in the camera setup and that large battery. So we'll get on with the unboxing. So yeah, my finger, um, I got a blist, really bad blister on it from drumming the other day because I played in a, in a music festival in Hong Kong. One of my first uh, real performances. But anyway, so yeah, pretty bad blister here. This is the same paper that's been with all the Umi Digi phones. It's a nice little personal touch, say thank you. And as usual, you get a pretty nice, like for a free case, this is really nice. It's fake leather but it feels a lot more premium uh, and has more character than those kind of clear TPU cases. Those, those jelly cases suck. This is a case I would actually use. So let's move it out of the way. Put the phone to the side. Link to the world. Sim ejector tool and papers. It's a pretty bare bones packaging. You see right here, it's a charging brick. Let's see, it's outputs at five volts. Seems to be a pretty standard charging brick. And a USB cable. Let's hope this is USB-C. Yep, this is USB-C. So now let's peel this off. So this is, I like this matte black finish. You see how, how nice this looks? It's not um, a fingerprint magnet at all, because this is a, I'm trying to see if this is metal. It feels like it might be composite, but it's not glass, definitely. But it feels more like a metal aluminum than it is a typical composite. But anyway, I'm a big fan of matte black. I'm tired of all the kind of shiny, gradient colors that every phone brand is doing. It's starting to get a little bit tiresome. So this is annoying too. When you peel off this part of the film, a lot of times you will mess up the, the um, screen protector that's already pre-applied. So luckily, I think I'm able to fix this. But there have been times when I've peeled this off of a Umi Digi phone just to mess up the entire screen protector. Anyway, so you guys know the drill. I'm gonna set up the phone and I'm gonna take it out and about and play with it and then we'll play with this phone because this is the F1 Play and then I'll be back. Alright guys, I'm back with the Umi Digi F1 Play. So I've been using this phone for the past two days and my impressions on it are pretty mixed. Let's talk about the good first. So. This phone sells for about $200, and for 200 bucks you're getting an all-screen design that looks pretty nice. In fact, you put it side by side with iPhone XS Max, this phone costs $1,000. This costs 200 bucks, and they look very similar. It's not like the bezels on the F1 Play are that much larger than the iPhone XS Max. In fact, they might be smaller, other than the chin. So the overall in-hand feel of this phone, it's uh, above average. I do think that there's a little rough edge here that I don't like, but I'm probably nitpicking at this price range. Other than that, it fits into the hand pretty nicely. There's a subtle curvature right here that rests in the palm pretty naturally. Now, two cameras here. I'm not gonna go over the megapixel counts for these cameras because I'm pretty sure the second camera, it's not a real camera again, and the main camera, I'll, I'll show you pictures later. It's just kind of hit and miss. Now this display is a 6.3 inch IPS LCD panel at 1080p resolution. 
Viewing angles are pretty good, although I do think that the way the glass is laminated, it's a little bit more reflective than usual. This was particularly bad when I was outside today. But outdoor visibility, it's, it's fine. Today was a very sunny day, so I had a little bit of trouble seeing the screen in max brightness outdoors, but for the most part, it's fine. And I, other than the glare, which you won't get if you're watching this in a dark room, this is a pretty nice screen. I think the color accuracy is on point. It seems to be 100% RGB color gamut or sRGB color gamut anyway. While we're here, we might as well check out the speakers. So this is a single bottom fine speaker, unfortunately. So we'll go up to 50% volume. So yeah, you can easily muffle with one finger, 100%. Yeah, so the speaker is pretty flat. You can see there's virtually no bass and vocals are a little bit flat too. So the screen is good, but the speakers are not. Now this phone runs on a Helio P60 chipset. It is powerful enough to handle most games in the Play Store. When I play Hero Hunter, which is very graphically intensive, it struggled a lot when I bumped it up to the highest graphics setting, but on the middle setting, it's fine. Likewise for Asphalt 9, I'm really impressed by performance for Asphalt 9. You see here, there's not much frame rate drops. Play for 20 minutes, the phone did heat up a little bit, but it mostly kept pace and it kept the frame rate at north of 30 frames per second, which is pretty good. Now in terms of processing power, we'll go into Geekbench really quick. The scores aren't that great. 1457 single core, so single core is pretty weak, but multi-core, it's above average at 5676. So this is a decent chipset that, you know, if you're just using day-to-day -day use to go on Instagram, send emails, all that, you're not going to have any issues. Now in terms of software, you have Android 9 here, and it's a very bare bones version of Android 9. So this is basically stock Android. Now you jump in the menu, there is a little bit of Chinglish. That's usually the case of Umi Digi phones and some other of these Senjen brands. So for example, if you go into Smart Assistance, for example, you go to Buttons, you see Anti-Missing. I don't know what Anti-Missing is supposed to mean. I, I think it just means if you turn it on, then it will require two swipes to get off a full screen um, app so then you don't actually swipe up slippery gesture i think they mean sliding navigation swiping navigation gesture and then right here you know just little things like that it looks weird it's like ch it's chinglish but other than that this is a pretty clean software with not much bloke i do wish there were more features like such as you know draw a circle to launch a camera double tap to turn on and off the screen there is none of that this is a vanilla skeleton version of android Wi-Fi connectivity is good. I'm able to connect to my 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi connection. And um, in terms of Wi-Fi range, it's pretty good too. My apartment's not that big, but I can go all the way to any corner of my apartment. I can get full-on reception. SIM reception in Hong Kong, it's excellent too. And I'm even able to get voice over LTE, which I cannot get on some other Chinese devices. Now, I have not used this phone overseas in in Southeast Asia or in, in the US here. I'm not sure if that if all the bands will support it, but you can check out umidigi.com to check to see if the bands support. Now, one of the major selling points of this phone, it's the relatively large 5,150 milliamp hour battery, and uh, it's pretty legit. So yesterday, I used the phone very heavily as my main phone, and um, I believe I got like almost six and a half hours of screen on time. Let me find... Yeah, so yesterday, as you can see, I grabbed the screenshot yesterday at 9.41 p.m. after all day out and about, 18% battery life le left, and um, I used the screen for 6 hours 38 minutes. So that's almost 7 hours of screen on time battery life if I were to drain this down to zero. In fact, I ran a battery test on PC Mark, and the score was um, basically the same, about 7 hours. Yeah, so I ran the PC Mark's battery test which drains the phone from 80% to 20% while leaving the screen on, speakers on and all the processing put to heavy use and it lasted 7 hours. That's a pretty high number. Now you notice that I haven't talked about the camera yet, that's because there's really not a lot to talk about. They're advertising a 48 megapixel main sensor here but I've seen really nothing that really suggests is a 48 megapixel lens. The camera app it's a little bit laggy. It's, it's a swipe heavy menu, but you see, when I swipe between modes, it's really slow 
to cycle through. At least the pro mode actually work. You actually can adjust color balance, color signs, and ISO exposure, all that. And um, for the main photo, even though I'm not sure it's a 48 megapixel lens, I do think you can get some pretty solid images if you have good lighting and you have a steady hand. Now, if you are taking photos in low light situations, then photos are going to be really grainy and noisy and just not good. Now, a year ago, two years ago, I can accept this for a phone under 200 bucks to not have a good camera at night. But nowadays, if we have phones like the Realme 3 or the Redmi Note 7, you know, these are backed by major companies like Xiaomi and Oppo. So they have um, invested more in computational photography. So they can give you a night mode that can make up for the fact that the budget cameras generally are not that good in bad lighting. With those phones, you can still get a pretty good shot with night mode. On Umi Digi devices, there is no night mode. So when you're taking photos at night, you're just going to get something that's very grainy and really unusable. Let me show you some photo samples right here. Yeah, you see, so this is a night, sh night shot. Um, all the lights in there are completely blown out. It's respectable for $200, but definitely you can get better photos from the Redmi Note 7 or the Realme 3. And both of those phones are also at the same price range. So if you go by that, then this is not a good photo. Likewise, the dynamic range suffers a little bit too. I mean, check out how poor the dynamic range is right here. This area that's kind of drenched in shadow is just completely dark. I mean, I understand it's an overcast day, but it should not look this dark. But again, if you have good lighting, you'll get pretty decent photos, although the color signs tend to be a little bit on the warm side. Now, this is a selfie photo. Balance is pretty good considering this is a really challenging situation. This is a, you know, backlight, major backlight. You can still see my face. You can still see... Uh, her laptop and face and overall it's a little bit overexposed but this is a good selfie camera for a budget device now the bokeh mode there was a previous version of this phone the f1 that i tested that one the bokeh mode didn't work at all this phone the bokeh mode actually works you can see that you can actually adjust the depth of field as you're taking the photo so that's impressive and the results actually turn out pretty nice now you see right here it's a bokeh image so you see that the edge detection around uh, my girlfriend right here actually looks pretty good and it actually found its way around the laptop too and the depth of field blur in the background looks pretty natural this is a pretty respectable shot so now let's look at videos there is no stabilization at all so it is quite jerky i mean this is 1080p resolution and there's no stabilization whatsoever the mic is also a little bit flat i think We'll check out one more video. I mean, this is not a terrible video, but it's it's not good. There are phones that can do better. Yeah, so overall, this is the Umi Digi F1 Play. At 200 bucks, it's tough because, like I said, two years ago, I can recommend this. A year ago, I can recommend it. But now, for 200 bucks, you might as well get a Realme 3 or get something like a Redmi Note 7. Both of those phones will give you a much better camera. But if you are a fan of Umi Digi for whatever reason, maybe you want to support smaller Sengen startups, or maybe you like the packaging, like the leather, the fake leather case that comes with this phone is pretty nice, then, you know, it's worth a look. If you can get it on discount, then yeah, it's worth a look too. But as of right now, can't really recommend this phone. Okay, so that's it for now. I'll have more videos coming next week. Thanks for watching.